Hello. Today I am going to show you how to implement a dead man's switch. A dead man's switch is supposed to activate when you die, or when you are incapacitated in some catastrophic way. It will send highly sensitive data to a loved one. Like passwords, digital identity information, and funds. There's many dead man's switches on the internet that you can try out. But almost all of them require you to self-host, a send-only, post-fix server. As a way to deal with your outgoing email. Although this is really easy to do, I don't like it. Email, as a protocol, is totally captured. Even if you do everything right, your deliverability can be compromised if a centralized entity makes a policy change over the weekend. Your emails can end up in the spam folder, or not delivered at all. Although I am still going to be using email in my dead man's switch solution, it's not going to be for delivering the dead man's switch payload of data. But only for redundant personal notifications. And I won't be self-hosting an email server either. I will be connecting to the SMTP server of a trusted email provider, which paradoxically, is a better way of going about things. The main application that I will be using for my dead man's switch, is Notify. A very simple notification service for mobile, that ensures reliable deliverability of messages with working push notifications. It is open source, and you can self-host a server of your own. I have been using Notify for years, and I have yet to experience a bug, or a failure to deliver a single notification. And its user interface could not be cleaner. It is exactly the sort of app that I am comfortable installing in my Dead Man's Switch recipient's phone. My Dead Man's Switch is based on an existing one. I will link to it in the description section below. I have simplified it, adapted it to my needs, and added a few useful comments to the code. I'm really happy with the result. And I am going to use it for myself. If you do as well. Please make sure that you understand the entirety of the script that triggers the dead man's switch. You don't want your setup to fail because there was a bug in the script, or because you didn't understand exactly what it was doing. This is not about making a cool video for my channel. It is about sharing a real tool to deal with a real issue. What happens with my data if I die? I take this seriously, and so should you. If you're confused about how a dead man's switch works, here it is in a nutshell. One of my servers runs a script that monitors how often I log into it. If I stop logging in, it will assume that I am dead, and trigger the dead man's switch through the Notify app. To do this in a private and self-sovereign way, I will have to self-host my own Notify server, which by the way, can be installed in the same machine where the script is running. Before the dead man's switch activates, I will also send a warning to myself, just to make sure that an error didn't occur, by notify, and by email. So the first thing I'll do is to install a notify server on a VPS. To ensure reliable deliverability of messages, specifically of attachments, I will have to run it behind a web server. Let's begin. The VPS that is going to host my Notify server, is up and configured. Please check the links in the description section below, if you want to see me do everything that is required. Hardening access to the server, getting a domain name, acquiring an SSL certificate, etc. The Notify website has extensive documentation about the project. Everything I'll do with it is documented there. So let's start by installing the server. A service is installed by default. Before enabling it, let's write a configuration file. These are my options. Again, everything is documented in the Notify website, 
What I'm doing here is creating a private instance of a Notify server with a few tweak defaults. Notice that my URL is already in place. The server is going to run behind a proxy. Listening on the specified port. The web app will be accessible for now. But signups will be disabled. And by providing the connection credentials to an SMTP server where I hold an account, my Notify server will be able to forward messages via email. I will do that later. For now, this is enough to initialize the server. My Notify server is up and running, listening for HTTP requests, on port 2586. Now let's move on to the web server. I will use, Nginx, and write a configuration file for Notify. Make sure that the URL and listening ports match yours. As well as the path to your SSL certificate and private key. Enabling the site. Everything is okay. So restart Nginx. And it's done. As soon as I allow incoming connections to port 443, the server's front end should be accessible from the internet. There it is. Notice in the upper right corner, that sign in is enabled, but sign up disabled, as specified in my notify configuration file. I will manage my accounts manually from the command line in the server, with the command, notify, which is extensively documented in the notify website. First I will create an admin account for myself, the dead man. I will protect it with a strong password. My admin account can create topics, or subscribe to an existing one, and it has read-write permissions in the server. Now that I'm here, I will subscribe to a new topic, DMS. This is the communications channel where my script will broadcast the dead man's switch messages and attachments. I will also create another topic for myself. Alerts. Where the dead man's switch warning will be issued. Now I will create a regular account in the server for the recipient of the dead man's switch. This account will have access to the DMS topics feed, but won't be able to post. I will also make sure that it cannot subscribe to my personal topic, alerts. These are my server's access rules. Once you set up your Notify server, you might want to use it for something else. If you do that, you can deny access to specific users to all topics in the server, with the following command. To test my setup, I will broadcast a message into both topics from the command line. I encourage you to go through the Notify documentation and learn about all the stuff that you can do with this tool. It's pretty impressive. Notice that I am sending to the DMS topic. I got it. Now let's send to my alerts topic. Both channels work. Now I will log in with the peer account. It can subscribe to the topic DMS. But it cannot subscribe to alerts. nor can it create any new topics in the server. 
I will try posting a message to the DMS topic, as the user peer. The user peer is forbidden to do so. I am done testing Notify with its web app, so I will disable it entirely. Now let's try it out in the mobile app. Before opening the app, I will disable battery optimization. In settings, enter your server's URL. Subscribe to an existing topic in your server and log in with your credentials. There's my subscription feed. Read that message, and select Enable Now. I will also subscribe to Alerts. So everything works as expected. But what about the push notifications here in the mobile app? I am going to force close the app, and post to my Alerts topic, from Termux. Pay attention to the upper left corner of my phone. You should see the notification there. I got it. I am switching off the screen of my phone, and posting again to my alerts topic from my laptop. The push notification wakes up my phone and makes a notification sound. It is time to decide which server is going to host my dead man switch. I cannot conceive not logging into this server for a week, let alone a month. So this is probably the right choice for me. I will save my dead man's switch script in user local bin. The first part of the script consists of variables. Most of which you don't have to touch. Please pause the video, and read all the comments. Okay. These variables in red are required for you to fill in. These ones in blue, you can also personalize. They are the subjects for notifications and emails. My name. My dead man's switch will activate after 4 weeks of me not logging in. I will get a warning 24 hours before activation. The URL to the dead man's notify topic. The URL to the dead man's switch notify topic. The notify admin account credentials. And if you configured an account on an SMTP server in your notify configuration file, add your email here. The second part of the script contains the logic, which is very simple. Please stop the video, read the comments and make sure you understand it if you're really going to use it as your dead man switch. When you are finished, make the file executable. The script needs to execute in the server regularly. Say, every hour. This is very easy to do. I'll just schedule a task in cron. Done. If you've gone through the code, you will know what happens if I trigger the script manually right now. It exits due to the fact that there's no timestamp file from my last login. I'll deal with that later. After I am finished managing the dead man's switch's data directory and its contents. All specified in the script. I will create my data and attachments directories. Now the dead man's message. This is personal. You should write your own text file. Now the dead man warning. If you read my message, you know that the payload of my dead man's switch, includes two files. I will copy them from my local machine, to my server. 
through SSH. I will move these files to the attachments directory of my dead man's switch. OK. Everything is in place except for one file. The dead man's timestamp. The file that records, in Unix time, the last successful login from the dead man. The simplest way of creating this record, is by adding the following line to my user's bash rc file. The interpreted sequence, s, of the date command, outputs the Unix time in seconds. If I source the bash rc file, I should get the timestamp file in my home. But I need it to be in my dead man's switch data directory. So I will create a symbolic link there that points to it. Lastly, I will restrict access to my dead man's switch data directory to the user root. My dead man's switch is ready. If I execute the script manually now, it will exit after reporting the time since the last sign of life, which it was a minute ago. If I accidentally delete the timestamp file, my bash rc file will create it again when I next log in. First of all, you should keep an eye on your logs, to check that your dead man's switch is behaving as expected. You can use the journal control command, like this. You can do one of two things to test your dead man's switch. You can lower the thresholds that activate the warning and the dead man's switch. Or, you can fake the timestamp and trigger these events immediately. That's what I've done. Look at this. I edited the DMT file so that the timestamp sits between the issue of the warning and the activation of the dead man's switch. This is what happened when I executed the script. I received a warning message in my Notify mobile app, Alerts, Topic. I also get the warning by email. And to test the dead man's switch, I faked the timestamp again, so that it goes over the threshold that triggers it. The notification in my alerts topic and the dead man's switch message and two attachments in the DMS topic. The files can be saved into my device. I will clear my Notify app's storage and initialize it again with the credentials of my dead man's switch recipient. message, and attachments. The reason why I have skipped more steps than usual when recording this video, is that you shouldn't be running a dead man's switch, if you're not absolutely confident in your technical abilities. This is not a trivial project. For example, you setting it up properly, could very well mean the difference between your loved ones, getting, or not getting, your Bitcoin. Having said that, if you're confused about something and want to learn more, remember to take a look at the videos linked below. There's a ton of resources there. Take care.